Drone swarm sightings have shocked Europe. They're scrambling military assets as the technology race between drones and anti-drone warfare increases. Defense ministers in the EU are calling for a drone wall to deter Russian aggression. Let's find out what that is on this episode of Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and it's September 29th, 2025, and there have been numerous drone swarms all over Europe the last couple of days and weeks, disrupting air travel, alarming the public, and ratcheting up military alerts. And a drone wall has been announced. What in the world is it? Well, let's find out. In France, unidentified drones flew over a military base housing one of France's tank regiments and is where Ukrainian soldiers are trained. French law strictly prohibits civilian drones from flying over bases. Then in Copenhagen, Denmark, the international airport was closed for several hours as lots of drones were spotted in the airspace. Five smaller Danish airports were closed as well. And NATO has gotten involved and is vowing to upgrade its presence in the Baltic Sea, including intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platforms, and at least one air defense frigate. The new assets bolster NATO's mission in the Baltic Sea after a series of incidents in which power cables, communication lines, and pipelines have been damaged. In addition to the drones around Copenhagen's airport, on September 26th, Danish press reported drones in the air at the corrupt airbase. They wouldn't comment on where the drones came from, but they said they did not shoot them down. On September 25th, two unidentified drones were observed near Sweden's principal naval installation in Karlskrona. None of the drones were recovered and no suspects have been identified. These drones displayed red and green lights according to witnesses and military drones generally don't have red and green lights indicating these were probably consumer grade drones. We just don't know who was operating them. In Norway, at least two drones flew around a restricted area near their base for F-35 fighter jets for at least an hour. And in northern Germany, a drone was spotted near the border with Denmark. German officials said the threat from the drone was high, and the German government is considering giving the military and the police authority to shoot down drones. In early September, police in northern Germany intercepted a vessel in the North Sea Canal that was suspected of serving as a drone launch platform. Equipment linked to drone operations was found on board the ship. But which entity or government the ship belonged to has not been reported. In Lithuania on September 26th, flights were disrupted by three unauthorized drone incursions near Vilnius Airport. In Finland, a drone was spotted flying over a hydropower plant and police were alerted. Power plants are designated no-fly areas and the airspace is highly restricted. In Poland, Russian drones were sighted inside their airspace last week, and NATO has launched Operation Eastern Sentry to bolster the defense of Europe's eastern flank. And on September 26th, defense ministers from 10 EU countries came together to strengthen the border with a drone wall. And in Romania, similar drone activity was observed. Russia is claiming innocence that the drone incursion into Poland was wayward drones from their war with Ukraine. On September 27th, Russia's foreign ministry said the measures the EU is taking will lead to an increase in military and political tensions on our continent. What Russia didn't say was that invading a sovereign country leads to increase in military and political tensions. The Russian foreign ministry also claimed the plans were all about the personal ambitions and political games of the EU's ruling elites. The irony apparently totally escaping the Russian foreign ministry. Responding to the EU reaction, Russia has denied breaching NATO airspace and calling it hysteria. The Danish Prime Minister was quoted as saying, there is one main country that poses a threat to Europe's security, and it is Russia. 
The drone flights began after Denmark said it would acquire long-range precision weapons to counter the Russian threat. Some of these drone sightings and reports could be just consumer drones, normal people out playing. But the recent uptick in drone activity and the raging conflict nearby point to a potential probing and testing by Russia. Add to this the mid-September cyber attack on airline systems that severely impacted key European airports, the Russian fighters probing Polish and Baltic state air defenses, and a picture of a shadow war starts to become clear. What is a drone wall the European leaders are talking about? Well, it would be a coordinated effort by uh, these European countries to deploy advanced surveillance and defense technology, including drones and sensors, along the border from the north with Finland through the Baltic states, Poland, Romania, all the way to the Black Sea. And while surveillance and detection efforts are pretty clear, what isn't known is what type of defensive technology would be employed to stop any illegal drone incursions. It's presumed that electronic countermeasures like jamming will be used to disrupt drone communication and GPS signals or spoofing efforts that send false signals to drones or taking direct control of them. Other anti-drone systems could be nets launched by projectiles to physically capture and disable drones. Also, laser systems are being developed to damage or destroy hostile drones. By having projectiles, in other words, shooting at drones, it can present a hazard to civilians on the ground. And interception drones can also be used with either nets or one-way interceptors to collide with the hostile drones. Through all of this, Russia has stepped up its drone and missile attacks on Kyiv, killing four civilians, including one child yesterday, September 28th. 80 people were injured. Russia continues to deny targeting of civilians, but images and video of attacks on residential areas do paint a different picture. It was the most saturated attack since Russia started the war in February 2022. The Ukraine military reported Russia launched 595 drones and 48 missiles and that its air defenses shot down 568 drones and 43 of the missiles. This is a dangerous game being played right now in Eastern Europe. Tensions are heightening and officials are wrestling with the issue of shooting down unidentified drones and Russian aircraft that infiltrate sovereign airspace. Drone warfare is rewriting the military strategy books and driving a whole new wave of technology and manufacturing in the defense sector. Countries are scrambling right now to catch up to the drone warfare that is on full display in the Ukraine-Russian war. It's a powder keg right now, and we'll see how it all plays out in the weeks and months ahead. Hopefully, calmer heads will prevail and instigators will dial it back. Shooting down or disabling wayward drones is one thing, but Polish or Finnish jets shooting down Russian warplanes inside their own airspace is another. In an earlier episode, we talked to a drone expert about this new warfare. Here's Jonathan Smith. So right now what we're seeing in the Ukraine-Russian conflict is we are in a war of drone and electronic warfare right now. Uh, this is the first time that FPV drones and commercial style drones, to my knowledge, have been implemented in the battlefield. Um, so before, you know, you would go through um, all the research and development avenues through the military, but now they're just using off-the-shelf commercial drones that anybody can buy. Like the DJI Mavic. The DJI, yep, that's, you know, that's that was kind of the first iteration of the drone warfare was using that for reconnaissance. Um, DJI also has what's called the servo upgrade where you can buy a $200 servo that straps underneath um, it plugs right in. You can map one of the switches on the stock controller for the DJI, and now you can drop grenades, bombs, whatever you want. Whatever can fit under the drone and it can fly, you can drop it. Wow. Um, and that was, you know, made for people in the hobby space to um, experiment with, you know, dropping little parachute guys or um, things that, that weren't made to kill people or to harm people. 
Um, and now you see out of necessity, the Ukrainians have had to use that in order to stop the invasion uh, of the Russians. Are governments clamping down on the capabilities of these commercial drones? And, and if so, in what way? Uh, not necessarily on the capabilities. Uh, I but mean, can we get this servo today here in the yes, United States? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, and as of now, you can still buy all of the DJI drones that, uh, that are being used. Then brings up what kind of countermeasures are being developed by the armies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from my understanding, both the Ukraine and the Russians do have RF jamming that they'll put on their vehicles. That way they have a mobile kind of protection bubble. Uh, again, with the, the FPV, if you have your bearing in sight before the jamming, you let go of the sticks and it's going to go, it's going to continue that trajectory. Um, so a lot like throwing a football, you know, to an open wide receiver on the football field, if you know roughly how that tank is going to be going, you can intercept him and it doesn't matter if your video gets cut out or your telemetry, as long as it continues that momentum, it's going to hit. So that's our report on the surge in drone activity over eastern NATO countries and the call for a drone wall. Thanks to our sponsors like Clemens Insurance, the guys there saved me a lot of money on my insurance by going to bat for me to the underwriters, which is what a broker is supposed to be doing. Check out ClemensInsurance.net. And as mortgage rates here in the U.S. start to settle and even maybe come down a little bit, check out Colton Mortgage at Colton Taking Off. It's run by a pilot. And check out our most recent report by clicking right here. Thanks for watching and remember, superior judgment trumps superior skill. Take care.